Good afternoon. My name is Pat Fox, and I'm the head football coach at Pontiac Notre Dame Prep. Um, and what I want to talk to you today is about external communications. You know, I'm an old school guy. I've been coaching since the 80s. In the old days, when we talked about communications, we sent a letter home to the parents with a paper calendar on it, and we called the news media and talked about our kids for about 10 minutes, and we made phone calls on Friday nights. And that's all we did, and it was, quite frankly, it was a wonderful, simpler world. But that's not how it is um, anymore. One of the things that has occurred, especially in the last 10 years, is promoting your program and expanding your program through external communications. And today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about what I like to say is building your Friday night experience through external communications. And when we talk about the communications, we have internal and external communications. Internal communications are generally things we do that we don't want people outside of our program to know. Um, game plans, scouting reports, um, corrective measures, and we basically use huddle and we use band for our internal communications and an email listing so that what we have is we have a private, tight, communications method with our parents and that and our players and that's how we do that. External communication is everything we want people to see, know, and hear about Notre Dame prep football. And here's what I'm going to tell you about external communications. There is always something going on and you want it on your external media accounts. You want it on your external media accounts because it promotes your program and it builds the attitude of, I want to be a part of that. Or somebody's reading about their grandson and it's bringing about goodwill. These are the things we try to do. So in internal communications, all communications are external except the following. Game plans, scouting reports, code words, signals, player discipline, and private events. There's some events we don't share. Okay, we have a wonderful event we call the Caveman Cookout, and we celebrate, we celebrate our seniors and we celebrate our dads. We cook up a ton of beef, but there's a point in time where each dad will present his son his jersey. And sometimes we get those recorded. When we get those recorded, we'll share those internally, but those are private moments for the program, not for the community. All right, our sources of internal communication, huddle email list, parent email list, band, and text groups. And that's how we handle internal communications. Now, everything else is an external communication. And here's where we're starting to really get better at things. Number one, Twitter. We've been a big Twitter program, you know, probably for the last four or five years because it's what I learned first, all right? Then last year, we started to expand to band, and band is really a tremendous tool for us. And one of the reasons I like band is because it gives your kids alerts. It gives people within their band groups alerts, and it gets them the opportunity to know when things are going on. In this other one here, you know, I got to tell you, it's Instagram. And I know nothing about Instagram. But my daughter, Hallie, who's 17, 16 years old, excuse me, she told me I should be on Instagram and I should like tag kids. I don't know what that means, but the kids love it. And so I put stuff on Instagram. I use all three of these. And if I could find a fourth, a fifth, and a sixth type of external communications, once you make your communication, it's just click and upload. And it's really easy to do. And the more you have out there, the more your program is, all right, the better it is. All right. And even on a bad day, there's good things. And one thing that I learned long ago, when I was a freshman, I went to the University of Tennessee, and I had this phys ed class, and they would bring in different coaches to talk to us. And I got a chance to hear the legendary coach, Pat Summit, talk. And she talked about making where you're at the big time. Well, I got to tell you what, I'm at a Division IV school with 700 great kids, we got great things going on here. I'm sure other people think they have great things. But when you look at our Twitter page, when you look at our Snap, or excuse me, our Instagram, and you look at our band, you're probably thinking we are the center of the football world.
And that's how I want it to be. I want to make where we're at the big time, and I want to communicate that with everybody. So the first thing, when you talk about external communication, you get to set the message. It allows you to be the spokesperson for your program. No one else is allowed on the Twitter. No one else is allowed uh, to set anything up but me. Now, Hallie, she takes care of Instagram. She uses the things I put on Twitter and ban and kicks them over to Instagram because I don't know anything about that. But other than that, nobody has access to me. We follow nobody, okay? All we do is send information on it. We don't want to get into Twitter wars. We don't want to have, you know, we don't want to get into arguments with people. We just want to promote through these external communication. It allows us to promote our program to the community, our school, the other kids, our parents, our former players, our alumni, all right, all those other groups that make Friday night important. It allows us to reach players' families. And I'm going to say this. We were, we were you know, we, we get about 40, 40 to 50% of our kids come to our high school in the ninth grade. And we don't go out and recruit. Kids come to us, okay? And we basically, whoever comes, we play with. We don't give money. We don't do any of that, okay? But we had a young man who's, who's in our program now, and his dad asked us, what do you do to promote your kids on Twitter? Well, I just sort of hit the click button and let them look. And I said, we also use Instagram. We also use, we also use band. We also, you know, we try to do everything because our kids, you know, they're visual, and their parents want to see that, and it's important. It allows you to build enthusiasm and set expectations with your kids. And if we can build enthusiasm within our community, we got something going on. It allows us to organize our different student groups. And I use band primarily for that, and I'm going to tell you how I do that at the end of this. But this is pretty good. As we talk about external communications, I break it down into six ways we do it. Number one, timely do it now. If it's happening and you can tweet it out, you can put it on Instagram, you can put it on band, do it now. Okay? Anything that's shared success, we're going to put out on, on, our, on our accounts. I'm going to teach you how to make a post and make it look good. I'm going to show you what we do on how to make a video. And we're going to do something called on the spot, which is kind of a fun deal. And then we're going to talk about building the family and try to promote our program and add kids to it. Okay? So the first thing is timely. Do it now. Let people know what's going on at this very moment. We use Twitter and Instagram for that. And that's basically the best, the best two tools, okay, for that event. The type of events, game highlights, okay? Game highlights. We will get, as soon as we get our film uploaded, I will come out with like eight to 10 plays. I will download those on Friday night and I'll put them out somewhere about 2 a.m. And the kids wake up in the morning, they'll have like, ooh, Johnny Cheeseburger with a touchdown. All right, what a beautiful pass, okay? And I just put it up there. Try not to rub your opponent's nose in it if you win. Make it about you guys, okay? Workouts. If you got workouts, snap a picture and post, post, post. Let them know what's going on. Camps. If you got a camp at your school, boom. It doesn't even have to be a football camp. Last year, the Detroit Tigers used our baseball field and ran a youth camp. And what happened is you paid a certain amount and all the kids got tiger uniforms. I went out there and took the pictures of these little kids. It was first class. What was my title? Always something good going on at Notre Dame Prep. Because if you can promote your school, you can promote your program, you're going to build your community. All right? Camps practice. Put a clip up. Take a snap of your practice film that looks good. Put it up and let somebody see it. Comment on a kid. And, you know, make somebody's day. Make some parents' day, all right? Let them know that Notre Dame prep is the big time. Let them know that your school is the big time. So here's some example. I got in trouble for this tweet, too, by the way. I got called on by the state because it was the, one of the local middle schools were using our field. The head coach is a friend of mine, 
and he asked me to talk to those kids. They said that wasn't legal. I got to be honest with you. I talked to them about being good men in the school, representing their families, and respecting women. Well, you know what? If that's wrong, then go ahead. Call my AD and get mad at me because I talked about good values. Didn't even talk football. And here's a picture of him from the press box. Hey, right here, that's a COVID virtual workout that we took a picture, we snapped it. Okay, here's a practice. This is a video, actually. You can see it down there. And what big to love the power read. Hashtag go Irish. See it for at 345. All right, over here, here's a, a post game clip. All right, we had a great play by Caleb Webb. Caleb Webb with the big grab. Okay, something just put it up there. And it's now. It's now. As soon as you can get it there. Shared success. We retweet all good, good news at Notre Dame Prep Maris Academy. What I'm going to tell you is this, share the love. What I have learned is most people, all right, like football, but in all athletics and in all school communities, there's some jealousy. And the fact that people come to games and it's important to the school community, and you know what, not as many people go to different events. They're not selling tickets to the forensics tournament, okay? Those people don't get the same attention as football. So when you see somebody in our community or in your community do well, retweet them. And if it's one of your players, now you got it. Retweet it. Any honors of any football players, academic, sports, community, Boy Scouts, you tweet it out there. Any honors for any former players, let them know the great kids that are here. Promote your program. Anything good about football as a game, put it out there. Okay? So here's some of the things we do. Here's Clayton Bone, uh, Division IV All-Region. I put a little picture up there. I make a little sign for him. Good. Here's one I really like. Notre Dame Prep Class of 2018, Eli McLean, academic, all Big Ten, Michigan State University. All right, and there's his name. I retweeted their thing. Eli's a great kid, was a great quarterback here. He's a scout team kid at Michigan State. He'll probably never play. Sorry, Eli, but that's probably the truth. But what I'm going to tell you is this. He represents our program proudly in his school community, and I'm going to give him recognition. It doesn't matter what it is. If it's good, we share it, okay? One of the things I want to talk to you about is this. If you're going to post on on Band, if you're going to post on Twitter, if you're going to post on Instagram, you want it to look good. And I mean this when I say it. Too many people, hey, just type it in. And that's fine. But that doesn't get anybody's attention. That doesn't get anybody's attention. So, What I do is I make a post, and this is how easy I do it. Now, pay attention. This is easy. You go use PowerPoint, and you type your message. Workouts at 345. Type it into PowerPoint. Put a photo on it, and hit design ideas. It'll give you like nine selections. Manipulate one of them. Choose your design. Save it as a JPEG, and upload it on band Twitter, Instagram, and go go to town. And that's how we do it. Let me show you what some of these look like. I think these look really good. Okay? This is our summer schedule for next year. Uh, It's got some hidden messages in it too. Okay? We are a Catholic school, and we are mission-driven. Okay? So our picture here, you know, we always put a picture of our kids sometimes in prayer before a game. It's important to our community to show that. Okay? Okay? And that's a really nice setup. It's got a picture, it's got the little summer schedule, and then it's got down the side. Now, here's a good one. I like this one. Notre Dame football, week of 112-20. Okay? I got one of my good young kids, Evan Noga. I got sort of a fade over. I don't know how to do that, but I hit design ideas, and it shows up for me. And then I freeze it, and I put my schedule on there. That looks better than just Twittering it out. It's really easy to do. Here's one. I like this one. Summer schedule one day. And here's our seniors walking through the, their, their, their new entrance thing that came in. So we took a picture of it and we put it up there. And then it was the first time anybody saw this was on Twitter. Our kids, well, we used to have like a tent. They would come out of it. It got old and moldy. Okay. So now we have this thing and it's, it's huge. 
While we show that, that's a good look. And people like to look at that message. And sometimes you get a kid that doesn't get a whole lot of attention, and you put his picture, we call it being the cover boy for the week. That's important. That's important. Put it in there and make it. Just It takes a little bit. It takes a little more effort, but it's good. The other thing we started with this year is I started making videos. I was really bored. And back a long time ago, I used to make iMovies. And iMovies are so easy to make. I don't have uh, an app anymore, so I had to learn to edit on something else. And I use like Pro, play, pro, um, pro uh, um, Adobe Pro Premiere. And it's kind of, I'm just learning to do it, but I'm not bad. But what I want to do is I, I put out promotional videos. Anything that's good, okay? I have three quarterbacks playing college football. Well, you know what? I have a video about the gunslingers. Okay, and I have cuts of all of them from 2016 through the current kid, Jacob, who's visiting someplace this weekend. All right, and what we do is we want our kids to see that. And you you got to learn to edit. Create a theme. Create a theme. All right, put some music to it. Here's what I'm going to tell you. If, you. if you steal music, Instagram will throw you off. Okay? But you put it on one of those private ones. I'm not saying which one banned. Okay, they won't throw you off. Okay, I love it. And we, we do that, and then we post it on band Twitter and Instagram. All right, I think I got a good example of one of these right here. Here we go, watch this. I like, I learned to do this. This is Coach Fox's editing skills. She says, Notre Dame football. I got some jazzy music that was free. Okay, and I think this one is called uh, Quarterback Legacy. This is the Gunslingers. And I make mistakes in this. I mean, no one ever knows there's a mistake in this one. Here's Matt Durkin. He played first in 16. He just graduated from the University of Dayton. And, you know, I had to dig up some vintage film. And then, you know, we show Matt throwing a, throwing a, you know, a deep ball against the number two team in the state, all right, which he led an upset against, which was, was outstanding. And, you know, here's another of them, same game. He throws like a, a boot pass, which is fantastic, okay. And, you know, another deep ball. We get three cuts of Matt. Okay, one game, three cuts. All right, then we go to Eli McLean, I think, comes in next. And Eli, okay, is at Michigan State University. Okay, the problem is Coach Fox missed a type there, and he had one more eye. Okay, no one's ever told me that, you know, so you know. But here's Eli, and Eli was a great quarterback for us, and he's throwing the ball all around the barn. Okay, and... You know, we're, we're showing our quarterbacks over time. And we put this in Twitter, and we called it the Gunslingers video. And the reason we did it, and we did it with the Gunslingers video, is you know what? We want kids who want to be quarterbacks and want to throw the ball and run, a, or run an exciting offense. We want them to see this. We want them to know that, you know what, our kids go play in college. Okay. And, you know, we, we're very lucky, you know, with the kids we've had. And our, our last one would be Jacob, who's visiting right now, who had 20 offers this year. And Jacob's outstanding. And all we do is we show film coming up through the end here, okay? And, you know, we come up here to the final bit, and we, we put a little closing on it, you know? We put a little closing on it. And heroes get rele- uh, remembered, but legends never die. And we just do that for fun. But you know what? It promotes our program. It promotes our program. I like the -the on-the-spot photos. These are just catching our kids being kids. We have something here called Irish Week. And Irish Week is when our school plays games against each other. They compete. I've adopted my site as the official Twitter, Instagram sites of Notre Dame Prep Irish Week. And what we do is we take pictures of everybody's kids. We take kids involved in every event. And then the word gets out that, you know, football Twitter account has all the Irish Week pictures. And I do it during Irish Week so when the kids are checking Twitter, they can see it. And all of a sudden, I get, you know, 100 more kids following us. And what a great thing that is because then they follow us all the time. They don't unfollow us. Okay? How about this? How about taking pictures of your kids just eating lunch? It's silly. It's stupid. But kids love it. And their parents like to see it. Here's the one I like. I call it nerding out in class. Every now and then I find out where my kids are in a science class where they're wearing the goggles. 
and I'll go in, I'll take the picture, and I'll say, you know, you know, um, Jacob Benson, all-state quarterback, 4.1 in the classroom. And you know, who doesn't love that? Parents love it. The kids love it. The school loves it. Everybody loves it. What you're doing is you're building the perception that your program is the big time, and it's not just about football. I think that's important. Now, here's our plan. We were all set to do this last year, and it's called building the family through promotion of the Friday night experience. And what I've decided is this. I think this is what you want to use band for. Because I want to have a private but external communication with different groups. And what I've learned is, and you know, I'm going to tell you, we didn't get to have any of these people at the games this year, so we couldn't use it. Okay, but we're ready to roll with this this year. So what I want to do is that each of my separate bands The first one is huge, the marching band and the band parents. Here's what I'm going to tell you. If you want to have have an easier life, get along with the band parents, okay? And our band guy and I are good friends, and I try to build a relationship with the band. At Milford, I'd go watch them. They're a competition band. I'd go watch them at competition. When they'd line up, I'd go look at them right in the eye. I'd say, come on, band, let's go. Come on now. And band competitions are awesome. Because if they say they're gonna start it, they're gonna put somebody on the field at, at 712, they're gonna be lining up at 703. And at 712 they start. So you don't have to go watch the other 30 bands. You just go there where they're lining up outside. You don't even have to pay. You razz them up a little bit. Come on, tuba. Let's get after it now tonight. Beat their tails. You're better than they are. And they all who's that? That's the football coach. And that's good. Then you get them in your band group. Now, we're not a competition band, so I'm going to tell you what I did. Two years ago, a year ago, last time we had stanzas, we routed somebody. And our band always does this post-game concert around this tree area. So I, I was before my surgeries, and I was hobbling. So I hobbled up next to the kid who was the uh, directing the band. And I took the instrument, and I led the band in the fight song like I was Eli Manning or, or Peyton Manning. And those kids loved that. And their parents loved it. Because you know why? Because they're accepted now as part of the Friday night experience. And they're part of it. And... The groups I want to have separate bands with are the band and the bands. The cheer and the cheer parents. Those kids work hard. We have a broadcast team here called the Irish Thunder. They they have their their group of three. They get their, the teachers. Why don't we include our teachers into a band group? Okay, student council, middle school student council, elementary student council, board of directors, Maris fathers and brothers who run our school. These are the different groups that I want to put in band. Now, I'm not going to have different things I'm sending to all of them. Here's what I'm going to do for each of them, okay? All of our shareholders get in the same, they get in the loop, all right? They get their own grant, they get their own band group, okay, that I expressly communicate only to them, allegedly, all right? So what they get is each group, I'm going to put together a packet for them that I give to my kids, Okay? Every week, I type up something to my kids, and I give them the game information. It is at home. It is at 7 o'clock. Okay? It is parents' night. It will be on live stream. There's no radio. Or there's radio and live stream. Here's where you find it if your parents can't come to the game. I tell our kids a little bit about the history of the opponent, and I and then what I do to the other groups is I invite them to the game. And then each group, let's get a little specialty blurb at the end. They all get this. And then they get a little blurp at the end of the message. Okay, the marching bands, cheerleaders, the band parents. We always thank them for the previous week. Okay? We give them a shout out if their kids are in my class. You know, Nick Melly. Not only a great history student, but you should see him on Friday night play the tuba. Okay? And we give a shout out to him. Or I have seven cheerleaders in my history class. They work so hard. Thank you for helping us on Friday night. You don't think their parents love that? 
okay? Let them know they're important to the game. There's a lot of people that work hard on Friday night, and though the emphasis is on football, those kids don't get a lot of attention. So when you give those kids attention, it becomes very important to them, and it becomes very important to their parents. And I think it's, and there's nothing wrong with sharing that. Okay, there's nothing wrong with sharing that. They're all our students. I have them all in my class. Okay, and so do you. Okay, recognize the kids you have in class. They love that. They really do. All right, let them know they're in part. And don't be afraid to be the band guy. I told you I directed the band. I always, you know, if I get a band shirt, I wear it. Okay, I wear everything to support everybody. Because you know what? Then when we have something good happen for us, we get less jealousy and everybody feels good. And I think that's important because if you build your community right in football, your school benefits. Broadcast team of the Irish Thunder. These are my boys, okay? They're good. Our kids two years ago were tremendous, all right? And I treated them like they were the real media. When they wanted to do an interview with me, I sat down and did a real interview with them. Okay, all right, they, they made us feel like we were the big time. We gave them interviews on podcasts, we treated them like they were ESPN, and we gave them the same respect. They were fantabulous, all right? Teachers, student council, middle school student council, and elementary student council. Always invite them to the game and ask them to invite the other kids to the game, all right? Invite the teachers to practice so they can come see their kids. Some of our kids aren't always the best kids in class, all right? So when they're at practice working their tail off, maybe getting chewed out a little bit, they like that, okay? And they like to come out. The other thing is there's a lot of teachers who played football, and they would love to be invited to practice because it was a big part of their life, and you can let them be part of it again by coming to practice. So we invite them. We want to promote spirit events, whatever they are. On the front of this, it was a blackout, okay? And then we thank our teachers and, our, and our everybody for all that they do. The last one is the board of directors and Maris Fathers, okay? I like to have a link to these guys. And they want to know what's going on, okay? They want to know what we're doing, all right? And I share with them the truth. If we've had problems in the program, I let them know because they're going to know anyways. I give them the information, then I send them a little note. Invite them to practices and game. And here's one. If you get a kid who's being recruited, they want to know how many phone calls and everything about it because they love it. And what I'm going to tell you is the better you can build your external communications and the more platforms you can use, the better it is. Make where you're at the big time. Promote your program. Promote your kids. Promote that what you're doing is the most important thing that they do all day. Thank you.